I didn't come to give a talk today because actually I was sent because people told me you, you were in, not an obedient audience. And so I came to check that out. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to say long. So just have to run some tests on you to make sure you're okay. Okay. So, and I have to make sure also my computer is okay. So, how does it feel to be the system under test for once? Uh, okay, let's run the first test. No, no, I'm sound. Good. Okay, so we have a sound problem. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I got it. I think that's it. Hmm. It's good to have tests. No. Yes. No. Yes. That's good. Perfect. Okay, next, next test. Okay, ready? That's it, that's all you have. Max, can you focus, please? <sighs> okay, let's try it again. Two. Okay. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Oh, now it's passing. You know, it's a little bit flaky. <laughs> Next time. Good. Next one. Yay! Perfect. Oh, yeah. Martina told me, oh, you're okay. She says so much stuff about you. But... <laughs> okay, thank you. That was it. Somewhere in the frenzy of the web, yet far from the darkest places, lives a peaceful, or generally peaceful, little community of chunkies. Wait, you look like you've never heard of chunkies before. Hmm, let me tell you more about them. So chunkies are pieces of code that all together can form all kinds of applications, at least when they get along together. They generally live with one or more developers who are trying their best to make them fit together. Uh, doesn't always work. So for instance, this specific Chunkies community is building a meal planning application. Wait, things seem agitated today. Chunkies can get a bit noisy, but don't be afraid. Let's see what's happening. Hey, Chunkies, has anyone seen Mr. Button recently? I know. Apparently, he just disappeared. Oh no, Mr. Button disappeared. We'll never find him again. We're lost. How can anyone use the app without Mr. Button? We're doomed. I was too busy watching my inputs for any changes, so I didn't notice he wasn't there anymore. Every good enough institution here, over and out. I told you, there was no test involving Mr. Button, so of course, no surprise he disappeared. That's why I never get attached to untested chunkies. They always end up disappearing or sick or crazy. Wait, I just found a test here, and the test is passing. This means that Mr. Button is still there. Or I just didn't do my job correctly. Test officer brackets, could you display the test, please? Of course, madam. <sighs> Sorry, we're low budget for special effects. Hmm, can you please zoom in on the source code of the click first add button function? Consider it done. Aha, gotcha. 
the function is calling methods on the component instance without interacting with the DOM. That is the reason we didn't detect the disappearance of Mr. Button. Let's interact with the DOM. Test officer brackets, can you run the test, please? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Now we have a failing test. Let's fix it. Well, we might need some help to figure out where Mr. Button is hiding or if he was abducted or something. Can we call Detective Dominic Printer? She's really good at this. Hey, so you need help debugging your DOM? OK, let's do this. In fact, there is no trace of Mr. Button here. But wait, here is an interesting trail. Look at this. Some ng-if condition is false here. Let's see the components code. Hmm. The condition is apparently wrong, as is already added, it seems to be unobservable. Hmm, let's try to fix this. Yeah, the test is passing. And here's Mr. Button Haladki. We miss you so much, buddy. Thank you so much, Dominic. I kept screaming, but nobody could hear me through the walls of NGF. Always happy to help. And remember, you can log as much as you want. It doesn't waste any paper. <laughs> Does anyone know what happened to Mr. Button? Oh, no. oh no, Mr. Button disappeared again. This is nonsense. The tests are passing. This is a job for Dominic again. Hey, Chunkies. Oh, wow. This is a busy dom. We need something better. Oh, I have a cousin who can help us. Is it the cousin with the glasses? No. Is it the cousin that keeps throwing errors? No. Is it the funny one who keeps you waiting when you call him, causing apps to freeze and stuff? No, I think that this one moved to a community called IBM. The one we need lives in a testing library called DOM testing library. He's kind of fancy and has a nice way of printing the DOM. Let me show you. Oh, this is indeed better. I love the colors. What is this DM CSS class here? Found it. Oh, hmm. And it's almost the exact same problem as we had before, and our test didn't detect it. Oh, wow. We know how to fix it, so let's do it. Wait. We have to figure out a way to make the tests pass first. Ugh, oh, you TDD people. My cousin told me about a friend of his who is a matcher from the just dumb neighborhood nearby. That could help. OK. Let's try it. Oh, well. The test is still passing. Hmm. Oh, we just have to figure out a way of loading the styles. I did the job, but this sounds a bit fragile, as we can easily forget to do this. Ah, that's true. But we have nothing better right now. OK. Let's just fix the code. Yeah, the test is passing. Mr. Button is back. Yay. Come on, not again. Oh no, Mr. Button disappeared again. There must be some matter bait off. There must be some better way to test this. Let's ask Marmicode. I heard they can help you with your testing strategy and stuff like that. Great idea. 
By the way, Eunice is giving a talk about this exact topic at NGD conference just right now. Let's go there and maybe we can let everyone know about our story or meet over Chunky's communities sharing the same issues. Hello. I hope you learned something. And now I'm short of time. <laughs> so my name is Eunice. I live in Lyon, France, which is a beautiful place to live in. I'm a Google developer expert for Angular and web technologies, because it turns out I'm passionate about Angular and web technologies. I'm also passionate about extreme programming, extreme programming values, extreme programming practices, and testing also. Uh, did I mention extreme programming and testing? Oh, well, anyway, that's the kind of things I like. So uh, we're on this, we try to run this local meet community meetups in Lyon. They're recorded, so you can watch them, you can join us, and stuff like that online. And what we do with them physically in Lyon. And we have an uh, open source group called JS Cutlery. We provide the Semver tool for NX, and uh, that's done um, by Edward Lott. And it's doing a great job for that. And we provide also Cypress harnesses and stuff like that. So it wouldn't happen if Edward wasn't <laughs> sacrificing all of his time there. Who knows Edward here? <laughs> OK, good, everyone. Nobody will notice on the camera. By the way, there's someone watching us right now, like in the future. And I, I don't know if it happens to you, like you're watching talk or something, and nobody says hi, like you joined the video. So can we say hi? Hi, welcome to the video. So uh, I do stuff like this, like workshops and coaching teams, like the idea of coaching, like letting people do stuff. And I'm working on some video courses. If you want to join there, it's going to happen there, get notified and stuff like that. And so I coach teams on different topics, including extreme programming and other stuff. Uh, and I'm not going to waste more time on this. So let's get back to our story, if you remember it again. So what happened? What happened is that we have a couple of chunkies who are using browserless testing, which is not headless testing, it's browserless. This is no browser. And they're using Jest or stuff like Vtest and stuff like that. But they do that because you don't want to download the browser and wait for the browser to pop. And I have all the problems of the browser. And, but the problem is that we don't have a browser, but our apps need DOM APIs and stuff like that. So that's why we use JS DOM and stuff like that that act like an emulator. So the advantage of this is that like, it's like you don't need much uh, tools. It's easy to debug because you can just run. It's not JS, so you just run it on your IDE, and that's it. It's pretty fast. But you're blind. <laughs> that's a problem when you're testing UI. And it's not very symmetric. It's really hard to make JS DOM act as a behavior. I mean, like, who even knows all the browser APIs? <laughs> like, it's so hard. So one day, my friend Lars told me about a little tool. By the way, do you know Lars? <laughs> He's doing a great job for the community. And he told me about uh, Jest Preview. Like, what the? I can't, another tool. <laughs> and by this guy called Hung. And it's a very interesting tool because you can send your DOM to the browser and you can visualize what's happening. Uh, it doesn't change anything to the test, but it can help debugging. The thing is, uh, the idea is that you're using a browser to render HTML instead of using your brain to render HTML. Because <laughs> mine doesn't work for that, at, at least. And it might feel like karma, <laughs> but it's not. So, and the other thing we use here is testing library just DOM, where there's this little match which turns out to be practical, where I can check if my button is visible. And by the way, we can thank Tim for bringing Angular testing library uh, to the community. He's done a great job. OK. Let's cook something. Just have to put my apron because you get all the chunkiest blood on your face. And uh, here we go. 
Um, beam. Beam. Yay, it's not what I wanted. OK, so let me just show you quickly what, what happened, what the chunkies did. So they have this. They have this. Um, they have this test, OK? So they're just clicking the first button they can find and check if the recipe is added to the meal planning. You can say the meal planner is a cart or something like that. And so they're in their tests, which run an X that runs test, <laughs> etc. And OK, let's make all the tests run. And on the other hand, you run just preview. Okay? And you get this beautiful browser here. And now, whatever you want, you just call the debug function from the just preview library. And once the test is running, if you have internet, you get pictures. <laughs> it's very interesting. And uh, oh, if you have a good connection, you get pictures faster. And um, so uh, what happens here is that my code here, this debug thing, is grabbing the whole DOM and sending it to the browser, uh, rendering that test, that uh, color snapshot. So we have a problem is that the buttons are not appearing because um, I'm in the browser so I can debug and see that it's a CSS problem. Then I can first add the test I wanted, which is I'm going to expect Mr. Button can check out the code later to understand why I'm calling a native element to be visible. And, oh, sorry, it not, won't change anything for the debug. But here, oops, da 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 da. da. Just trying to by so make it a little bit more beautiful. So my my tests are uh, completely failing because the button is not displayed. So what happens here is that because my component is hiding this, is adding this CSS class. My component is hidden. So that's because I'm doing this mistake of just uh, using the observable without using the pipe async or pipe push or whatever. And here, I, here we go. It's fixed, and the test is passing. OK, so this is what happened. So OK, that's good. But then. I'm going to check this out a little bit more in details. But what happens later is I remember Mr. Button disappears again. Oh, OK. Oops. Just. So now I'm in the future, which becomes the present. And this time, still have exact same test. The test is passing. But someone told me the button is not there. I'm like, it's there because the test says so. And we disagree. So I debug. And the test is passing. So the button is visible because tests are the oracle. It's the only person you can believe because you can believe people. You can only believe tests. And what? The button is not there. Actually, there's another button. I'm like, what? OK, so let's debug it. I'm like, what's this share button? And then, thanks to the whole DevTools about Flexbox, I can see, oh, there is a Flexbox. My button is here. And it has a large size, so I cannot even use its size, say, OK, it's zero pixels, so it's not there. It's there. It's large. So the button is there. So it's not a bug. <laughs> but people can't click on it because it's <laughs> somewhat hidden. It's hidden because I'm um, having a CSS problem here with the Flexbox basis stuff because I've been poof, debugging this and I introduced the bug. Um, the funny thing, little story, this happened to us in production because we had end-to-end -end tests and stuff like that with Protect Protector at the time. And the tests were saying everything is there, but everything was zero pixels. <laughs> so mm, I have a problem with this. So how can we, how can we fix this? I mean, I know how to fix it. It's actually uh, someone added the flex basis here. 
which makes it hide the button. But I have no clue of testing this. And I don't want my test to get coupled to the implementation details. You don't want your test to say, oh, this class should, should, CSS class should not be there. This slide should not be there. You want to, we just want to know if the button is there. So that's where we hit the hard limits of this. Um, so let's get back to the slides. And OK, you can take my notes and the, the preview. And I, I'll watch you do the rest. How, how come it doesn't guess this? Mm, OK, so we cooked. Did someone see me, see where I put my clicker? Ah, thank you. <laughs> so what happened here is that, first of, first of all, I had to do some Crazy stuff to make the styles get there. Because first thing, did you know that just, just preset Angular, which is something we use a lot, just <laughs> removes the styles? Because we're in browserless testing, so we don't need styles. So there's an issue for that. Then just preview has an issue with loading styles and style URLs. That turns out it can work. And CSS is not like a citizen, first citizen when it comes to browserless testing. The other thing is. There's something wrong with to be visible, because it says it's visible, but it's not, obviously. So let's do something pretty unusual and read the docs. So what the docs say is that these are the checks they make. If we're in this case, which we were in, like the display non stuff, it's OK. But if you have like flex layout stuff, uh, good luck. So. It's OK. If we implement the CSS layout in JS DOM, it should work. Maybe if we check the size or I don't know, get computer style, whatever. And guess what? JS DOM doesn't implement a layout engine. It's not a browser. It's an emulator. And Dominic, who's I learned this pretty great. Ah, should upload him too. And, uh, and uh, it's like, oh, this could happen, but it won't. So <laughs> it's not a priority. So OK, it's not probably not the right way of doing that. Then. The common thing is like, oh, let's use Cypress or Playwright or whatever. And is everyone familiar with Cypress? Yeah. yeah. Everyone, the one who's watching. Uh, <laughs> OK. So one interesting thing about Cypress is uh, this page in the landing page that says, here are the most important things about Cypress because it's debuggable and you get like real time reloads, you have time travel, and blah, blah, blah. It's pretty cool. But there's another crazy feature which is not on the landing page is that Cypress has actionability. What does that mean? Before acting on anything, like when you call Cypress click, when you want to click on a button or whatever, it's doing all these checks. So, Actually, it's not clicking on the button. It's trying to find its position, finding the center, and clicking at the pixel in the middle, and making sure that we're clicking the right element, because we might have a dialogue or something on top of it, and real life stuff. So OK, good. Cypress is great. What's well, stopping us? Let's, like, why I could stop my talk right here and not make Ale uh, Alex start his talk at 1 PM and make you, I don't know, very angry, by the way? Perfect. Nobody's angry. Great can just go add some slides or do whatever. <laughs> and so what's stopping us? The first thing is loading the whole app. Well, pretty nice discussions yesterday about large scale apps and time it takes to build, time it takes to reload, and real stuff. Like, <sighs> loading the whole app. It's slow. It's cumbersome. Then the app needs some little tweak, some library, some build thing. And I don't know, you're not able to load the whole app anyway. So there's some stuff. And the other thing is that uh, it's, uh, I love TDD. So, <laughs> but, uh, so when you TDD, you start testing, implementing components that you push to production, or whatever. But they're not plugged yet. You're not using them yet. But if I'm not using them, then how can I test them in Cypress? Then you start hacking stuff and adding parameters or whatever. Or did anyone test their components on the about page or on the not found page or stuff like that? <laughs> Liars. <laughs> OK. And then you get all the painful arrange phase of the test, like the, the phase where you prepare your test before 
doing your actions. And it's like, oh, it's okay, but wait, we have authentication. Ah, let's do something. Let's call the real authentication mechanism. Let's somehow double it with something else. Let's, and then you get authentication, and then you get a wizard. <laughs> and you want to test the last step of the wizard. And the three first steps of the wizard are uploading files. Awesome, fun. <laughs> so, it becomes tricky. And so we get this brilliant idea about network stubbing. Stubbing, which are not mocks, as Martin Fowler would say, oh, mocks aren't stubs. Okay? So it's different. And the problem with stubs, with network stubbing, is it brings a lot of problems because you have to handle the fixtures and it's an implementation detail and it's something that will move and you have to break. Really? Okay. <laughs> it's the MC took five minutes of my talk. I'm, I'm going to get you. <laughs> so the trade off is Cypress component testing. So, what's Cypress component testing? So, the idea is instead of loading my whole app, I'm going to load just a single component and run stuff on it. And special thanks to Jordan for the great job. So in order to do this, we have to set up the whole thing. Pretty nice thing. If you're using Angular CLI, there's a schematic. And if you're using NX, there's a generator. Who's not using NX? Nobody. Perfect. Everybody's in there. <laughs> Great. Good choice. So we can thank Caleb for the generator. He's doing a great job. <laughs> Might sound simple. It's not that simple because there's a lot of setup. And even what Cypress does, that go, goes grab your styles and stuff like that from the Angular or the NX configuration, something like that. OK, so let's go this quickly, and then we're done. OK? Uh, just have to figure out. So how does that work? Well, bye bye, just preview. So you just have a Cypress test like this. And let's do it TDD way, or what I like to call command driven design, uh, command driven testing, or command driven development, whatever. So it's what I want. I want to mount my recipe search component, I want to click the first button, and I want to make sure the burger or the multation is added to the meal pair. But where does the multation come from? So we have somewhat set up multation in the recipe repository or whatever, the service going to grab that. OK, let's do this. So test UI, it's going to use, it's going to run an X when it wants to. It's not my fault. It's my machine, just slow. <laughs> it's run component tests, which is running Cypress, and perfect opportunity, opportunity to drink. <coughs> Almost <coughs> killed myself. <coughs> Sorry for that. So here's my test, and it's passing because, of course, that's not doing nothing. So what I'm going to do is <coughs> Cypress. Oh, Curry. What the? <laughs> it's getting this. This is going spi to get spicy. Recipe search component, and let's see what happens. Oops. So <coughs> the tests are broken because I need. Haha, <laughs> browser animation module. Of course, this can be done at some point, so you don't have to do it on every test. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Don't like shared configuration that ends up with all your shared module and stuff like that. Oh, now I get an error, which is uh, no, not, you can see it much, but anyway. So it's not implemented error because my I'm calling the recipe repository, which is not implemented yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake it. I'm going to double it. I'm not going to mock it, because we keep using the word mock, but they're not mocks. They're either stubs or fakes in general or spice. And what I want is I want to say, oh, there's variables three. There's another one. And I'm going to use the recipe repository fake. And I prefer fakes. Uh, 
I'd love to come back if I don't like eat 30 minutes of Alex and people don't want me to come back ever. So <laughs> uh, I love to come back and tell you why I love fakes so much instead of subs. So I'm having a fake repository. The thing that is that my fake repository just does nothing, so it's not showing any recipes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it my manually, because I don't care, or you could use a factory or whatever. Uh, yeah, I could use a factory. Oh, yeah, let's just create it here. So I'm going to recipe repo fake. And the cool thing is that I have an additional method just for testing on the fake that allows me to set the recipe. And I have an object mother, which is a pretty interesting unused uh, pattern for testing stuff, and uh, what's the image from ravioli? Ravioli. OK, that's the multation. Closest thing to multation. And is it six? It's OK. And uh, is it considered a meal, beer, in Germany? OK, good. So same. Same in France. Perfect. Good. So, awesome. So I have my recipes, and I have a bad connection, so it's not working. But anyway, so I have the, the problem. You can see that you can see that the the bat buttons are not are not sh the the add button is not showing. So I'm gonna just um, of course I'm gonna use Cypress. I'm gonna grab. I use by deserts just like by test ideas. Just I like to call it data dash data all uh, because. Uh, it's when I add these attributes, it's not just for testing, it can help for other stuff. And here we go. So it's trying to click the first button and look at the message, which is pretty tiny, but I can show it in the console. Ah, there we go. And look at this beautiful error. Look, it's saying timed out trying because I tried to click on this and it's covered by this. You see? But you can't see. I can see either. It's too small. Anyway, so this is, it's saying I'm trying to click on this button, and, but look, I'm getting the share button. And like, not even a human could give you that feedback. <laughs> Good. So Alex is going to give a lot of best practices <laughs> about Cypress just later. So, and now I'm going to make sure that the multations are added in the meal recipe, the meal planner. So, the kind of reflex is stubbing the HTTP network, which is like infrastructure detail. Bad idea. Another idea is I'm in my domain, so I'm going to I'm going to replace the meal planner with something else. So I could use stubs or spies. I don't like it that much, but I could use a fake meal planner or even the, the, the meal planner itself because it's pretty simple and I want just the whole thing and buy so I can leave. So what I can do here, it's not perfect yet. We might, this might be improved. We could, we could, I'm going to open an issue, and if Jordan doesn't like it, you can just, all of you, come and like it and we put pressure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's super cool. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab asynchronously. Guess what? <laughs> the test bed. Lovely test bed. And I can inject the mail planner, which is pretty crazy. And I'm going to grab the recipes, which is not observable. I'm going to read the uh, first value from it. That's when you're. And, sh uh, and I'm going to grab the first element and grab its name. There are other ways of doing this, but. And should contain something like. Uh, is it burger or multation? It's burger. Oh, sorry for that. So we should have a burger. The first item in the list is a burger. And it's not the right window. Oh, yeah, of course, the test is not passing. <laughs> so I have to just fix it. Uh, I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, it's in there. It's hard to guess where it comes from. So it's this crappy little flex pages here. And ta-da, boom. And you get your okay. test. So this could be considered as a 
narrow test, which is another topic we can talk about later if you want. But so I don't use the unit integration uh, vocab. So I use narrow and wide. And narrow is a couple of rules like being fast or it's relatively fast. It's isolated. You don't. It's going to be stable at the, in the time. You can change your API. You can move from HTTP to GraphQL to gRPC, then get back to HTTP, <laughs> whatever. You know, real life. <laughs> and, and then that's it. And once I'm here, last step is pretty cheap. Is better boom. Uh, and then uh, I should implement an alias for this because it's very boring. And what I added here <laughs> is just, it, oh yeah, I did it in a different way. I'm using always like a setup function with really explicit uh, function names that I can use. And I'm using Percy Snapshot. You can use all kind of tools like that. When what Percy Snapshot does is that you run your the same test. Oops, you're on team. What? Okay. Visual regressions, and it's going to run the same tests, and you can take visual uh, snapshots of that thing. But the funny thing with Percy, well, it's a platform of everything, so it's very quite interesting. There are other tools, and what it's going to do, I'm going to, and I'm not going to say, I'm going to let it do its work. So what it's going to do is that uh, it is pretty cool because you end up when you have internet. Uh, I'm off to time. Can, can, I, can someone give me like a USB key with internet or something? Uh, anyway, that's it. Huh. Well, okay, sorry for that. Well, anyway, so the, the, the funny thing, let's keep it working, I'm going to show you other stuff. So the thing is, uh, it's going to take visual snapshots, it's going to say the DOM to Percy, and then you're going to have diff, visual diffing on different browsers with different resolutions, which is perfect. So you get pixel. Uh, it's not always pixel perfect, but it's going to give you a uh, pixel. You can test the visual results. So anyway, I uh, should have taken a screenshot. Anyway, that's bad. And uh, last thing, so what are the key takeaways here? So the key takeaway is that, da, da, da. OK, let's just do this like that. So. Choose the right tool, depending on what you're testing. So of course, browserless testing is light, so it's pretty nice. But if you want to interact with the DOM, then maybe Cypress component testing is the right thing for you. The other thing is prefer doubling services to network stubbing. So you create fakes or whatever, and you isolate your stuff, not at the HTTP level with all the fixtures and stuff. And last thing is, oh, prefer fakes to stops and spies because they're reusable. They can be a little bit smarter and make this easier to understand. And one last thing, which I didn't cover here, I covered it like in previous talk, but I'll share the link, is using what I call gloves and harnesses uh, to not get your tests dirty with implementation details. And you can use. Uh, uh, it's Cypress Angular, it, I mean Cypress Harness here. You can use JS Cutlery Cypress Harness that allows you to load uh, Angular CDK harnesses in uh, Cypress. Uh, and last thing is the future, magic ball, so I don't know, I'm just speculating here. So <laughs> the thing is, we might get some Cypress and Storybook support someday. We tried this before at JS Cutlery, it works quite well, like loading your Storybook stories in Cypress and doing all your tests. And there might be playwright component testing for Angular in the future, because there is an experimental thing with, uh, with uh, other frameworks and, or frameworks. So my last gift to you is um, um, I give workshops on testing and stuff like that. And you can get a discount until 2 PM by going to that link. And you get the discount to, until 2 PM, so you have time to call your managers. <laughs> and, Ask them for their credit card number. And otherwise, you can still try next week and there's another discount. Well, thank you. And special thanks to my wife, Elise, was very patient with me. And for her voice, for the music, for her patient, because, yeah, with the, for, yeah, for helping with the music and stuff like that. Uh, oh, yeah, the selfie time. Alex, do you want to join for the selfie? Let's do a selfie. <laughs> and by the way, do you want, to show, do you want me to show you NGX Component Store? Yes. So this way you don't have to give a talk. Of course, yes. What's the link? Yes. All that talk for and course. and we can we can have yeah. <laughs> let's let's have a beer and just oh you have the the, the snapshot. 
Uh, ah, look at this. Oh, you, okay, so you got it. Yeah, it works. And it says, oh, the pixels, blah, blah, blah. It's, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, you got it. Uh, okay, and the dogs, what's the, what's the dogs? <laughs> <It's just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, see, let's get this selfie. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's good.